everybody. Um, I'm Becca. I'm going to show you how to make a respiratory mask from home um, with a wire bridge over your nose so that you get a nice seal. Um, there's a couple of patterns out there and I've tried a lot of them and the ones that I found didn't get a nice seal uh, like we want our PPE to be sealed for our healthcare professionals. First of all, this is not an N95. Um, it will not protect you from coronavirus necessarily, but these are being made for healthcare professionals that aren't working with COVID people who still need PPE, but the PPE is um, non-existent right now. So um, first you need to pre-wash your fabric. Second, you need to disinfect your entire workspace. I have gloves on. Um, if you don't have gloves, you just need to make sure you wash your hands with for 25 seconds with hot water. I disinfected my machine, my scissors, my Sharpie, my iron, my ironing board, uh, my needle nose pliers that I'm gonna be using for this special project. And this is not the fastest way to do this. There are other ways that are fast, but they don't have the nose bridge, which is kind of important because we don't want droplets to get down into the nose. So let's get started. What we need is a cotton quilting, any pattern, it can be white, it doesn't matter and cotton flannel. Uh, again, we're gonna pre-wash this. So I've pre-cut these, all my pieces. This is six by nine. There you go, six by nine. Um, whoop, wrong way. And uh, we're gonna pre-cut our elastic. The top piece is gonna be 12 inches long. The bottom is gonna be 14 inches. And later in the video, I'll explain why those are different and um, the reasoning behind that. So. Um, you need also some wire. If you're doing a nose bridge like I'm doing, then you need some type of floral wire or um, jewelry wire. I have jewelry wire. I think that's what it is. It's really bendy. So I'm doubling mine up. So the length of wire you need is three and a half inches. Since mine is doubled up, mine is seven inches. And what I've also done, so I I'm, take my fancy HEB Buddy um, ruler. I'm measuring out seven inches. I'm cutting with uh, my needle nose that have been disinfected. They don't look clean, but they really are. Folding in half, and then I'm pinching, you can't probably see it, the ends, so they don't poke out like underwire in your bra, okay? Um, so we'll get to that later. But what we're gonna do now is get started. I also made sure to clean my needles because that's important. I'm actually make a pillow. So the face of your fabric should be facing up, and then you have your flannel facing it as well. So pretend you're making a pillow and you're going to have your the faces of your two fabric facing each other. Um, so I'm going to peel this back. I got my 12 inch piece about half an inch from that corner there. I'm going to sandwich this and then I'm going to pin it. And I'll tell you what, doing this with gloves is not fun. But if you're making these for other healthcare professionals, we need to keep things as clean as possible. Um, and then same thing on the other side, we wanna make sure it stays flat and we're gonna pin it about half an inch um, from the edge. You're gonna have a weird ripply bubble over here. So you wanna make sure that your fabric still meets the edge. Can you see that? Sorry. I'm probably gonna lose these gloves here in a minute. <laughs> okay, so that's the top. And we wanna keep track of which is the top and the bottom because you, that's where we're gonna put our metal for our, our nose piece. So, again, this is our longer 14 inch piece. And my elastic is 3 eighths wide. I like quarter inch better, but um, everybody is out of elastic right now because people are trying to help out make masks, hopefully for other people. My goal is to make at least 100 to donate to whatever hospital will take them. These are going to Dallas. Okay. So again, about half an inch. I'm not measuring if you can't if you want, but that's just, I'm trying to pump these out as fast as possible. All right. So I've picked a very bright colored uh, thread just so you can see better for the video. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew an inch and a half from this corner up and then all the way across and then down an inch and a half. And then the same thing on the other side inch and a half up, over, and inch and a half down. When we go over our elastic, we're gonna backstitch over and over again because uh, 
it gets so much tension, we wanna make sure that these stay together. These are ideally reusable, washable, and we're gonna do a quarter inch from the end. Um, all right, so let's get going. And of course, my presser foot is tied up. Can you tell this is my first YouTube video? Okay, here we go. I'm doing about two and a half stitch lengths for these. I'm gonna back stitch over the elastic, pull my needle, because we don't need it anymore. And then we're gonna go to a quarter inch to the corner. And then we're gonna turn 90. Make sure your elastic is inside your little pocket there. All right, and off we go, all the way across. A quarter inch in the end. Turn 90, and again, we're gonna go down just half of an inch, I mean, an inch and a half, and make sure you double stitch over your elastic. Pull my needle so I don't break it. Back stitch. And then down about an inch and a half, and then back stitch. All right. That side is done. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side. Same thing. So I'll probably fast forward this part of the video. Inch and a half from the end. We're going to cut our corners, so make sure you don't trim your um, your stitching in the corner. I may not have mentioned this, but your elastic can go flush with the edge of your fabric when you're putting it in. There are certainly other ways to do this. If you do this around the ear, um, that works. But I, have, from, my, from what I understand, a lot of the nurses. Um, say that it hurts after a while and as somebody who understands PPE a little bit um, I understand that so we're gonna use um, I, there's like a little tool that you can use to poke out your corners I don't have one of those so I'm gonna use my really good scissors oh sorry But I mean, who's gonna really complain about a rounded corner at this point? All right, so now we're gonna head over to our iron. Okay, so now we're gonna iron this out. We, uh, we need to press, we need to fold this under the quarter of an inch, iron it, and then we wanna press out our seams so they're nice and neat. All right. There's your little pillow piece there. Okay, we're gonna go back to the machine. Um, we have our little wire here that I've made um, that's three and a half inches long. Um, again, mine's doubled, so I cut a piece at seven and folded it in half and then pinched the ends. I don't know where my camera actually is. So that um, doesn't poke out. So now we're gonna make a little pipe pocket. And you can measure from the ends if you want. It's about two and five eighths but I'm just gonna eyeball the center and mark a little outside. You totally can't see what I'm doing. 
I'm marking it a little bit outside the wire length, right? Because what I'm going to do now is sew down, across, and then back up. I'm going to change my stitch length to one because I want a really tight stitch there to hold this um, wire in place. And away we go. I'm going to back stitch a couple times too because it will help hold it in. I'm only sewing this about an eighth of an inch from the edge because we want uh, to make sure that your quarter of an inch of, a, of seam allowance doesn't get missed. I'm going to turn 90 and then we're going to sew nice and straight hopefully. All right, so now before I finish sewing that, I'm gonna leave my needle in, and then I'm gonna poke my little piece of metal into down into that tight pocket. Okay, make sure you push it past your little mark there, and then we're just gonna finish sewing this stretch here. You want to make sure you don't hit your metal because it'll probably break your needle. All right. Back up. All right. And that's in. So now you can, whoops, you can see um, in just a second how it'll be nice and bendy. It'll hold the flexibility of somebody's nose, which is great because we want a good seal. Now that we're done with that part, we're going to seal up the ends of our little pillow. I'm using white fabric or white thread for most of my mask, but I'm showing you with this with blue. I'm doing this about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Can you see that? thread is totally sticking to my gloves, by the way, which is awesome. Now we are going to pleat um, our piece. So this is what's going to keep it taut on the ends. You could do a, a like a another pipe pocket and then run your elastic through, but that means using more elastic and there's a shortage of elastic. So I'm doing three pleats. The other video I saw did two, but I noticed that when I did that, it puckered on the, like it stuck out too far like this on the ends of my cheeks, which is a space to allow in gross stuff. So I'm going to come down about three quarters of an inch on each side and then pin. I'm also gonna go back and iron once I get this because it helps. One, it makes it look cute. Well, I totally pin my glove. Boy. Finger, press it down. Ah. And then I'm gonna fold down another one about the same, maybe a little bit smaller because we wanna be able to fit three in here. Final one, we're gonna pin it down. Again, this is the one where it gets pretty tight. This is a little person that's trying to help out. Say hi. hi. Hello. Hey. 
So pinning this last piece, and then I'm going to take it over to the iron and iron this flat. I'm not going to show you that because I think you probably know how to iron. But anyway, you want it nice and squished. Okay, so I've ironed, I've pressed this really nice and clean. What we're going to do now is we're going to sew down this edge. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at this YouTubing. We're going to sew down this edge here, and then we're actually going to go all the way around. Um, and we'll sew back over this little seam here just so it hides it a little bit more. Although, if we're caring about vanity right now, like, what are we really doing? Anyway, moving on. Uh, here we go. So I'm doing this uh, about, I'm doing a quarter of inch from the edge here. And then as I get close to my needles, I'm pulling them. My machine is really old. It's a JCPenney 7054 that my meemaw gave me when I was nine. So it does not like going through all the sticks once you've got it. So I'm just going to do it's old. is basically it we're done I'm going to show you how to put it on and then you can be off on your way saving people who don't have PPE these could also be used for people who have maybe um, poor immune systems that also don't have access to to correct PPE right now because people are anyway um, okay so here you go so it's just like the paper ones it, it spreads out, goes back, it bends at the nose, and I will show you now how they fit. Okay, so we're all done. Um, I'm gonna show you how to put it on. So both straps go over. The uh, top strap goes down, bottom strap goes up. So that's how you get that nice tight pulling down and pulling up. So you can see the seal is really good considering it's fabric and you can see so, um, Sunny wants to show you, she's going to be our little model. Yeah, you can show. Oh, okay. So you don't really have to adjust the, the, um, pattern because this fits her and she has a teeny face, but a pretty big head. Turn your head. So you see how it crosses the bottom strap goes up, the top goes down. All right, that's it. Thank you. If you say hi, I'll wear it. you will. If you enjoy this video, please share it and donate to the Alley Theater in Houston, Texas, so I can go back to work. All right, thanks. Bye.